Hello everyone, this is Reza Dorani. Today's video is about adding pagination to Power Apps Galleries. The users can leverage the pagination controls to navigate through the items in the gallery by leveraging the next, previous, first and last buttons. We will also provide the users with filters so they can filter the items in the gallery and also select the pagination size dynamically. All of this while keeping performance and optimization in mind with large data sources. So let's get started with the video, but first, my introduction. To begin with, in this scenario, I have a data source that is a SharePoint list that has over 5,000 records. So we are dealing with a large data set. Also, in order to showcase a collection of records, we need to utilize the gallery control in Power Apps. And in this screen, we are looking at a gallery control that is showcasing me all the data from that SharePoint list. And I have also gone ahead and added a few filters so the user can go ahead and filter the data in the gallery. We also have the pagination logic that has been defined that will paginate through a set of records based on the page size that the user has defined. So right now my pagination size is 15. So it is going to show me 15 records and I can start paginating through my data set. And not just that, I can also leverage the filters that have been defined. So if I select my region as north, this will filter my data set and show me all the data based on the region north. And once again, I can start paginating. Now the pagination size is dynamic. So the user can change the page size on the fly, as you can see right here. Now, if you look at the pagination controls that I have added to the screen, Right now it tells me that I'm on page one of 10 plus pages. And right here, I can click on the next icon right here to keep paginating through each page. So right now I'm on page two, I move ahead to page three. If I would like to go directly to the last page based on the data set that I have loaded, I can just click on this icon. And right here now, it takes me directly to page number 10. And once I reach to that last page, it goes ahead and loads the next set of pages for me. So it's actually performing the pagination for me in an optimized manner, purely because you don't want to load your entire data set at once in your Power App. So this is optimized pagination right here. Of course, I can even go back to a previous page or click on the first icon to directly take me to the first page. Let's see how these pagination controls were added to this gallery. There are a few key concepts that are important to understand about how galleries work. So if I head over to the insert tab right here and select a gallery, so let's say I select a vertical gallery right here and I connect this gallery to my data source, which is my SharePoint list of students. I will just go ahead and change the layout of this gallery so we can see more data points right here. Now the key thing to understand is the items property of my gallery is querying my data source, which is my SharePoint list of students. So the query basically is get me all the records from my students list. Now I have over 5,000 records in my backend data source. So my data set is large. What happens in Power Apps? Does Power Apps really load all those 5,000 records right here in memory in the app? Or does it actually load the data in an optimized fashion? Now in order to confirm that, what we can do is this. I will just add a very simple label control. And for the text property of this label, I will call the formula count rows, the name of the gallery, dot all items. Now this will give me the total count of the number of items that are currently present in this gallery. Now if you notice one thing right here, if I play this app, the count shows up as 100. My data source in the backhand has over 5000 records. That means even though I'm executing the query that says, go ahead and get me all the records from my data source, it is not getting me all the records of my data source. In fact, it is optimizing the query purely from a performance standpoint. And this happens out of the box in Power Apps when you query your data sources, as long as your formula against your data source is delegable. And what is delegation? Delegation basically means how Power Apps handles large data sets. So when does Power Apps load the next data set? If the user starts scrolling down, and once I pass the hundredth record in the gallery, 
What's going to happen right now, if you notice on the top right here, the loader is running, it actually performs a second query against your data source and gets the next set of data once again in batches of 100. So now the gallery has 200 records. And of course, if I keep scrolling to the bottom of the gallery, every time I reach the last record in my gallery control, the next query will be executed against the data source if there are more records. All of this happens out of the box in an optimized manner as long as my query is following the delegation protocols. If you would like to learn more about delegation, I have done an exclusive video series on delegation. I will paste the link to that in the description of this video. So do check that out. Now that we've understood this basic concept, let's go ahead and go back to my main screen, which is my paginated gallery. In order to create pagination in your galleries, when I get the data, the key here is that I need to perform some query logic on the data purely because I want to only show a certain set of records. And that depends upon two factors. One is the pagination size, how many records I want to show. And second, the page number that I am on. So if I'm on page number one, show me the first 10 records. If I'm on page number two, show me the next 10 records. The key here is that I have to execute certain filter queries that give me certain set of records. And in order for us to achieve this, we would have to use certain functions and those functions are basically the first n and the last n functions. And what they do is they give you the first set of records or the last set of records, depending upon the number that you provide. Now, if I was to go back to this gallery, my gallery of students, and let's say I want to only show first 10 students. Now, in order for us to go ahead and apply that first n function to this data set, what I would like to show you first is if I head over to files and go to settings and then head over to advanced settings, we have the delegation limit that's set right here. And by default, this is 500. You can increase this to a maximum of 2000. Now let's say I change this to one. And the reason why I'm changing this to one is because I want to create an app wherein all my functions are supporting delegation. So I don't have to worry about the setting whatsoever. But in this case, I've kept it as one because I want to show you what happens if I try and execute that first end function. So if I head back right here to that same gallery, and let's say I apply the function first end. So get me the first end records. Let's say get me 10 records. Now, when I fire this query, if you notice for students belonging to the region North, I had over hundred records for sure, because the gallery was showcasing that for me. But in this case, if you observe, it only gives me one. You see the number? It's only one. It just gives me one student. And the reason is because it's actually falling into that delegation issue right here. Because first n and last n are not delegable functions. And because they are not delegable functions, if I utilize these functions while querying my data source, I will run into an issue. And the issue that I'm going to run into is the delegation issue. So it's not going to work for large data sets. And that is exactly what I need when I'm actually performing pagination on my galleries. So now comes the question, how do I utilize those functions, which is first end and last end to get paginated set of records and at the same time, utilize the power of the gallery and the delegation and power apps, wherein it does the optimization batching of hundred records and then create a pagination experience. So keeping that train of thought in mind in this scenario, what I did is this. I've created a gallery right here and this gallery is a hidden gallery. If you look at the visible property, it is set to false. This gallery does not even have any controls in it. If you look at the items property of this gallery, I am querying my data source, which is my same students list. And then I'm adding certain filter criteria, depending upon the filter options that the user selects. And all of this is supporting delegation purely because I'm not getting any delegation warnings here. That means this gallery, which is the hidden gallery is going to actually perform the optimized batch loading of a hundred records and query large data sources because delegation is supported. Now that I have this gallery in place, of course, I cannot apply the first 10 and last 10 functions to this gallery because I will run into delegation issues and then it won't query my data source in an optimized manner. So this gallery is the gallery now that queries my data source. Now I need another gallery to show the data visually to the user. And that is my gallery called gal student info. And if you look at the items property of this gallery, 
This is where I'm applying all those additional formulas of first and last and calculating page numbers and pagination size. When I perform these queries, I'm performing it against that hidden gallery. So that gallery is performing the queries in an optimized manner. And this gallery is just utilizing the data set that is already loaded in Power Apps in memory in an optimized manner. And then I'm performing my queries on this. How do we go about doing pagination of records? So for the screen, I have an on visible property. And the first step is I am setting a variable called page number called where page number. And I'm setting that to one it means I'm going to be on my first page every time the user comes onto the screen. I have this next icon that I have added right here. And when the user selects this icon, all I'm doing right here is on select of this icon. I'm incrementing that variable, which is where page number by one. And when the user clicks the previous button, all I'm doing is I'm decrementing that variable by one. Next thing is this hidden gallery has all that data, right? That it is querying from my data source. Now I need the total count of records in that gallery. So for that, what I have done is I've created a hidden label. And all I'm doing right here is I'm counting the number of items in that gallery right here. I have the pagination size, which is my drop down that I have created right here. And I'm providing the user three options, which is five, 10 and 15. I can go ahead and add any pagination size of my choice. I, mean, I can even make this a slider control where the user selects any page size of their choice. So in this case, I added the number 20. Let's say I play my app and let's say I select 20. Now notice when I select 20, I get a scroll bar in the gallery. And honestly, if you're creating pagination, you want to avoid scrolling. So ensure that the pagination size that you're providing has enough real estate for the items in your gallery to fit on the screen without having the scroll bar on the gallery control. So in my case, 15 was the sweet spot. So I stopped at 15. That's because I have that much real estate to fit the gallery on my screen. If we look at the gallery right here, the key formula is right here. For all the items in that hidden gallery, get me the first n records. The pagination size drop down that the user has selected multiplied by the page number that the user is on. Let's say my pagination size is 10 and I'm on page number five. That's five into 10. That's 50. So get me 50 records. However, I want to only show records in batches. That means get me 50 records and then get the last set of records based on the pagination size. The last function will grab the last 10 records because my page size is 10 in that 50 record data set. And that's how I'm actually implementing pagination. So if I play this right now, my page size is 10. When I hit next, it will go and load the next 10 records in memory. Now I can also filter my data. So I want to get all the students whose names begin with will. If I search for will, this will now query my data source in an optimized manner and get me all the students whose names begin with will. Now notice right here, it says that you have five pages of information. And as I start scrolling through each page, it will load data in batches of 10 because that's my pagination size. I can even apply additional filter criteria that like get me all the students whose names begin with will and they belong to the region South. And in this case, I have three pages of information all grouped in batches of 10. Now, when I reach the last page, if you notice right here, I only have the last set of records because the data source itself is just returning me in this case, 25 records because I have two full pages and the last page here has only five records. Now, how did I achieve this for this? I had to write this additional query right here. And this query is just to handle the last set of records. I checked to see if the next icon is disabled or not. I will show you the disable formula shortly. But the query goes this way. It's exactly the same as my regular query. But the only difference is because I only need the last set of data. I have to get the pagination size multiplied by the page number and subtract that by the total number of items that are loaded in that hidden gallery. And the result that I get, I'm going to subtract it with the original pagination size. And if I write this formula, it will only give me the last set of records if I am on the last page. All of these formulas that I'm showcasing right here, I will plug them into the description of this video so you can grab it from there.
So I have the previous icon. So when I select this, it reduces the page number by one. But I also have this icon that directly takes me to the first page. And all I had to do in this case, when the user selects this icon is just set the page number to one because I want to just directly go to the first page. When I click next, I'm increasing the page number by one. And when I select the last icon right here, this should take me to the last page in the data set that is currently loaded. And in order for me to achieve that, all I had to do was this, the total number of items in my gallery that is hidden, get that, divide that by the pagination size that the user has selected and round it up. I have 25 records, my pagination size is 10. So if you look at this formula right here, the result would be three. That's because it is 25 divided by 10 and then rounded up. So it's technically 2.5 rounded up that goes to the next highest number, which is three. And that's exactly what it's picking up. So that is how I am changing the page number based on these icons that are being clicked by the user. When do I enable or disable these icons? So right now I'm on the third page, which is the last page. If you notice the next icons, both are disabled. So if you look at the display mode property for both of these icons, the logic is simple. If the pagination size multiplied by the page number is less than or equal to the total number of items in that hidden gallery, that means there are more records in that hidden gallery. So keep these buttons active, otherwise disable them. And for both the previous icons, if you look at the display mode property, if the page number is one, just disable it because I'm on the first page, otherwise keep these active. And now comes the key logic for making all of this work. You can notice I just clicked on reset. It just went ahead and reset my filters. And right now I'm getting all my data from my data set. Now my data set has over 5,000 records. And in this previous example around gallery, I showed you how if I'm just querying my data source and if my data source returns a large set of data, the gallery optimizes it. It only loads hundred records. When does it load the next set of records? It loads it only and only when the user accesses the last record, right? Once I hit the last record in the gallery, it loads the next set of hundred. Now in my paginated gallery, I am on page one of 10 plus pages. If I go to that last page, the gallery should load the next set of records. If you notice the gallery loaded the next set of records, right? It's at page 10 of 20 plus pages. Now, if I go next, it's going to load the next set of records. So it's basically loading data in batches of hundred, which is exactly the default behavior of that gallery. Now that gallery is a hidden gallery. So how am I scrolling to the last record in that gallery? which is initiating the process of fetching the next set of records in an optimized manner. That gallery is not even visible. So how is that happening? Every gallery has a property called default, which allows you to show the default selection. So in this case, if you notice, as I page through my screen, it's default selecting the first record and I can select any record of my choice by just clicking on it. So the key here is to leverage that function, which is the default function. So I can actually go, to the last record of the gallery, basically select the last record in that hidden gallery without the user even realizing. And if I hit that last record, optimized batching will trigger and it will load the next set of records from my data source. So how did I do that? The pagination size multiplied by the page number is greater than or equal to the number of records collected in this gallery, right? Self dot all items gets me all the items in that gallery go to the last item in the gallery. And how am I doing that? Very easy. Last of self dot all items. So it automatically goes and clicks the last item in the gallery when that scenario occurs. Now, if there are more records in my data source based on that optimized batching logic, which is out of the box, it will fetch the records. If not, it won't. And that is exactly what's happening right here. As I keep on clicking next, it's actually performing optimized batching. Notice right here, it went and loaded the next set of records because now my page number changed to 40. And how am I displaying this label? All I'm doing right here is giving the page number that the user is on. I already have that variable. So page number, so and so of how many pages. And all I'm doing right here basically is a little bit of calculation to get the final page number. So this is how you can easily create pagination in your galleries and work with large data sets so I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, then do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
and don't forget to hit the bell icon so that whenever I post my video, you get notified about it immediately. Thank you so much for watching.